Hey everyone, Sav and Sean here, and I'm excited about this one. We have an exciting video for you today. What's going on, Sav? Well, we chatted with the guys at Vessel from the PGA show. We're always looking yeah. out for the greatest products to share with you guys, because mm -hmm. we're so passionate about what we do and the companies we represent. Mm -hmm. And boy, oh boy, are we excited about this company that we get super to represent. Excited. Yeah, super excited. They were so nice to us at the PGA show. Like yeah. Some of the nicest people that we've met in the now, industry. Now I can see why Tiger it deals with these guys because yeah. they make Tiger's bag. And if you they like the look. Ricky's bag. Yeah. Ricky's bag. President's Cup bags. Yeah. So they, uh, and then one of the things I just I read on their website, every bag they sell they give away a mm -hmm. backpack to a school, a school child in need. So they've, yeah. they've actually donated over 27,000 backpacks yeah, around the world. That's huge. Yeah. So it's like that, uh, you know, buy a pair of socks, get another pair of socks for free. Yeah. They do that with golf bags. Yeah. So I'm really and excited. And this video is not sponsored. We really just want to show you how excited we are about this product and just share how amazing the company is because they do deserve a big shout out. Yep. Like, Companies like this are hard to come by and we're yeah. super excited. And this is actually, fun fact, my first golf bag that's actually mine. Your golf bag. Because I've always it wasn't had your... a, It wasn't a hand-me-down from dad? Exactly. <laughs> all, my, all my golf bags so far have been hand-me-downs from dad, which I'm super grateful for. But now I get my own golf bag. Exactly. You so. get to have a little feminine... Yes. ...touch added to what's going on with Sav. So yeah. we'll give you the honor, Sav. You okay. go first. So also we have, so we have three out of the four or five items that we ordered. We have one more box coming. I think it's my tour bag. Yeah. So your box coming tomorrow. So once that comes in, we'll add that to the video. But for now, we gonna unbox this. Oh man, look at that. Oh my, oh my. So I got the cart bag in all white. Wow. With wow. my name and our club crest yes. embroidered. There you go. On it. Because you, you like to use those those tri the pull cards. Those pull cards, yeah. yeah. Those three wheeler pull cards. This is actually beautiful. Wow. And Fun fact also about the bags is that even though it's white, like I was looking at the all white and I was like, that's so beautiful, but will it get dirty? And the material they make them with is yep. very easy to clean. So you literally take like a, a warm washcloth and yep. you can just take off whatever the, dirt. The, the, the material, just by touching that material, it feels like a luxurious leather, yep. but it doesn't have the weight of the leather. Yeah, it's super lightweight. Like it, it's not heavy. Exactly. I, can't, I couldn't believe how light this is. I know. Unreal. And, and by the way, the vessel logo represents the V of a ship, of a vessel. Yeah. Which transports, of course, your golf clubs to your, your home, to your car, and to, your, to each hole that you play. Yeah. So it's really well done. And these bags come in an option of a six-way slot for your clubs or a 14-way. So if yeah. you like your bag being like super organized, yes. you have one spot for each club. I got the six-way just because that's kind of what I'm used to. Yeah, but um, man, wow! Little pocket well, let, here. Let me get mine out first, and then we'll transfer our stuff into the golf yeah. bags. How's that? Okay. <laughs> it's like I'll Christmas. Show my name. And so, this is. So I got. I like to carry my bag. So I've got the dual color carry bag so we got the club logo here the royal quebec club logo 1874 it's the oldest club in north america and look at that golf channel academy with sean clement look how beautiful their logoing is that's gorgeous like the embroidery is so nice so i'm excited because you know uh, it's not every day that you join this kind of club we're very proud mm -hmm. of the accomplishments we've had so far and it's so cool to be able to highlight that on a bag of this quality and just for reference that's the 14 way slot oh i got the 14 way yeah so this is okay just a little difference here so you can see so we got that yep 
So you've got these two bags. And it's a double strap. So yeah. I, yeah, so I got an adjustable double strap with, uh, with this dial. Wow, this is really cool. Mm -hmm. Can't wait to show that to you. And then the last thing we have for the video right now. Yeah, we had to get some matching head covers and it's probably in the last box. Yeah. So. So we'll show that when they come in. Oh, this was cool. We saw this at the show. And so for when our customers, our, our clients and our students come to see us and we take them on course or we take them to the back of the range where we have our, our practice holes, this thing <laughs> rocks absolutely. So it's a cooler. But it looks like... A, like Look at that. That's so cool. So it's, it's all nicely lined and it comes in with a, a, um, a lid that's also insulated. Mm -hmm. So that fits in there and it zips up. So it's, it's watertight mm -hmm. when you're putting the ice in there. And then whichever, you know, if you want to put some snacks and, uh, you know, all your beverages in there and, and then the stuff that I need to teach, like, you know, teas and extra stuff that I can put in there. It's, uh, it is a phenomenal add-on for a golf academy such as ours. So yeah. we're very, very pleased to, uh, to have this little addition. All right, let's transfer our stuff. Okay. All right. So I'm putting my three woods here at the top. And I bet you that sleeve right there is for the putter. So that takes care of that. Oh, and look, there's a little engraving in the... Uh in the pocket here with your serial number of your bag. Oh yeah, remember they were telling us every bag has their own serial number, like your own personalized serial number. Really? Yeah. Is that, that can't be how it works. <laughs> what? <laughs> I think it goes to... Yeah. That's it. There we go. Exactly. So smart. That's so easy to put on. Isn't it? That's what daughters are for. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping dad in line. So this is typically how you want to put your golf clubs in your golf bag. A lot of people don't know how to do that. And there's a reason behind it. So your woods go in at the top and they got a main sleeve here for your putter. And then your long irons go into the middle section. So long and mid irons, and then your short irons and wedges go on the bottom so that your iron, your, your long and mid irons don't bang on your short irons and your short irons and your wedges are together at the bottom. So it keeps everything nicely classified. And uh, this is the first time I've actually used a 14. I usually use the same kind of separators as you do, Sav. But I, I could get used to that because the mid-size grips that I have are, take up a lot of space in the bag. And I think that this is going to help me, you know, uh, make it more seamless getting the, the golf, the golf uh, clubs back out of the bag. So the strap is phenomenal. I mean, it, it just clipped in so easily and it's, it's got this adjustable disc right here so that it's, it, it just adjusts naturally to your structure. Just phenomenal. Very happy. So when Savannah has her bag in the cart, the, basically the bag lies like this. Wedges are on the bottom, mid and short irons are here. Long irons and hybrids are on top and then the driver and the putter goes in the top sleeve. So it, it, it'll sit like this mm -hmm. and it, everything is so well organized. Yeah. Well, FedEx was true to their word. We came, we, I just got my, my golf bag today. We brought it out and uh, to show you how absolutely gorgeous this bag is. And uh, I can understand why Tiger uh, really uh, like, loves this company. Um, the materials that they use obviously are top grade. It is a much lighter bag. And look at the quality of the logos that they put on the golf bag. Just phenomenal. All right, Sav. 
you can't have a wisdom in golf video without a little bit of instruction, right? Mm -hmm. So we had a little compromise. Yeah. So we did a Q&A and we have a very important question here from one of our students that uh, lives in Australia. And he started taking uh, online lessons from me about three months ago, mm -hmm. right? And he's been building, his swing's looking fantastic. Mm -hmm. He's striping the ball and uh, you know, Kareem, your swing is looking really, really sound. And so he says, man, I'm hitting the ball so great. And he organized a trip to the U.S. Mm -hmm. So he's coming to play Torrey Pines, right? Which bucket is list course. bucket list golf course. Mm -hmm. So he gets to San Diego. Uh, and then two weeks prior, he was he got a little ill, had a st stomach flu, was a little weak, couldn't practice. Then finally got better, came to the to the U.S. and then went went on his golf trip. And he says, I couldn't hit anything when I got there. I couldn't hit my irons anymore. And he just left it at that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he hasn't been with us that long. You know, three months is not a very long time when you're talking about, you know, a lifetime of wisdom with us. Mm -hmm. And it reminded me of a round that you played, mm -hmm. right? So in your second tournament, I mean, come on, you're green. Yeah. Right. You're a rookie yeah. and you get out there in your second event. The first event was a little easier for you because you knew one of the one of the girls in the group. Yeah. So one of the ladies in the group was actually a member at the golf course yep. that I'm a member at. And so she was like super sweet, like helped me like throw and kind of gave me tips and stuff. So I like felt comfortable. And yeah. like for my first event, I didn't have that many expectations just because I was right. like, OK, we're just going to see how this goes. Like, don't put any pressure on yourself. And then the second one was at um, a course called Cap Rouge. Nice course. Super nice course. It's not that difficult. And right. in, in the practice round that we played together, I was really excited and I was like, yeah, you had a lot of birdies in our practice. I, know. I was like, holy crap, like this is going to be awesome. Like yeah. I, I enjoyed the course. I felt comfortable on it. Like I did well in my practice round and then I got to the actual event yeah. and literally like shut the bed, <laughs> shut the bed, right? We've all been there, right? Yeah. So let's examine that for a second. So you're on the first hole. And you hit a good drive mm -hmm. and you know, your drivers come a long way. And now mm -hmm. it's like, Hey, I got this. And you hit a beautiful drive down the middle yeah. and you got a gap wedge going into the first green. Yeah. So what was your focus standing over the gap wedge? Just get it on the green, get it on mm -hmm. the green, please. You're saying prayers, right? Mm -hmm. It's the first hole. Everybody's nervous. Yeah. So what happens then is you start forgetting about your task. Your simple task. You say, okay, what's my flight plan? Mm -hmm. Where do I want to start? Where do I want to end? You notice yeah. every time we play together, I'm asking you, mm -hmm. please, out loud, yeah. call your shot. Yeah. So you call your shot. You got your intermediate point. I say, okay, you got your spot. You got your feel. Mm -hmm. What feel were you sending in there? Didn't have one. Didn't have a feel. Yeah. And where'd you leave the ball? In the front right bunker. Front right bunker. So. And the pin's also front right. <laughs> so, well, yeah. So you, you got suckered into that pin. Yeah. So what happens is you got, you went over it, mm -hmm. pulled it into yeah. the front right bunker yeah. because you didn't have your task to the direction you wanted yeah. to start it. So you lost your direction. You lost your feel. Mm -hmm. And because you were tight, you lost some distance. Also proceeded to double the hole. So. I, on a hole that I would have normally birdied or parred, mm. I double. Yeah. And so that obviously doesn't put you in the greatest headspace for the rest of the round. I'm like, how did this happen? Practice round was fine. Like, why did I do that? Da, da, da. And then it and starts then to race, doesn't it? It's just gone. Yeah. Right. Like you just lose it from there <laughs> instead of just like being rational and saying, okay, it yep. was the first hole, whatever, leave it behind you and like move forward. Well, here's the deal. This is what I want. You know, if you rewind simply to the second shot mm -hmm. and you say, well, I didn't stay with my direction and I didn't have a feel I was sending in that direction. Mm -hmm. I got lucky to put it in the bunker, mm -hmm. right? And there's no sand in the bunker and you sculled it over the green. And at that time you, you were still struggling with your bunker shots. Mm -hmm. So, you could have easily gone, man, I wasn't focused on that second shot. Mm -hmm. So therefore it's not my fault. It wasn't my body. Mm -hmm. I had chaos in the mind. I'm going to have chaos in the movement. Yeah. So then you go, okay, well, I got to focus a lot harder. Mm -hmm. That's where you need to go. So mm -hmm. Kareem, you get to Torrey Pines and you get to that and you're going, 
okay, what's going on? You're, in a, you're, you're you haven't hit balls in two weeks. Mm -hmm. You're coming off an illness and you're, you're not there sharp, mm -hmm. sharp. And you know, your, your pencil's not sharp. So you get into the shot and you hit a shot and you go, oh my God, I can't believe I missed that. Boy, that felt awful. <laughs> Something must be wrong, mm -hmm. right? So then you start blaming the machine mm -hmm. and you're thinking, what's wrong with me? Yeah. I was okay and now I'm not okay. Yeah. I was functioning, now I'm defective. Mm -hmm. And then all you have to do is go back to that last shot mm -hmm. and ask yourself, well, what the heck were you focused on? Yeah. And that's it. So that's why if you look at our premium channel, and you know, Kareem, that's, this is a, a, a video analysis that he sent me. Mm -hmm. He sent me a wonderful looking golf swing, mm -hmm. but I had to send him back two questions. Mm -hmm. What were you focused on? Mm -hmm. What's the last thing that went through your mind before you hit your iron shots, right? right? And he'll come back and say, I forgot, mm -hmm. or I was focused on this body part or that body part. So, so he started putting everything into question. And he, mm -hmm. he, in the video analysis, he says, I feel like I have to strip back down to the bare bones fundamentals and build myself back up. Which you don't. <laughs> Are you nuts? That is like the, ma the most massive waste of time there is. Mm -hmm. All you got to do is go, well, what do I want to do? Yeah. I want to go that way. Mm -hmm. How? That flight. Mm -hmm. Okay. What does that feel like when I go in there? Mm -hmm. And you, de you deliver that feel into that flight and then you go, well, how'd I do? Yeah. Right? And you stay with that master plan. Yeah. So if you stick, if you go to our, our premium channel, everything is structured chronologically in order. Mm -hmm. So it leads you to, okay, this is what a good grip feels like. This is good, yeah. good setup feels like. This is what a good slinging action feels like. Mm -hmm. This is what a good release feels like. This is how you predict how to put that in the way of your release into the picture mm -hmm. because if you don't have that direction, how can that ball be a precise intersection? You can't. Right? Yeah. And what I've learned through playing in competition under like pressure situations is that it's all mental. It's all between the ears. Yep. So it's like, hey, I got this. Mm -hmm. Here's why. Mm -hmm. The ball needs to do that. Mm -hmm. I need this to set up there. Yeah, and also just like not paying attention to the, okay, if I go there, then I'm screwed. If I go there, I'm screwed. It's more so putting yourself in the positive frame of mind of, okay, yeah. what do I actually need to do here? And yes. how am I going to execute it rather than all the negative exactly. stuff that pops into your head? Yeah. And, and that's what the architect is there for, right? Mm -hmm. So you got a competition and then you may have some conditions that are less than desirable, mm -hmm. windy, rainy, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. You're playing with people that you don't know. Yep. You don't know if they're going to be, you know, sticks in the mud or right. they're going to be nice. Well, that's the one thing that the member told me during my first tournament. She's like, you'll notice that you'll have some ladies like me who are really friendly and like approachable and like you can chit chat yeah. and like oh, that looks ask questions good. and they'll help you out. But there will be some ladies who are the total opposite. Yeah. And honestly, for me, I was kind of expecting that. And it's not that hard for me to You've been a competitor adapt. before, yes. Wow. I've been a competitor before. And like I've, I've played on soccer teams wow. with like 30 What's girls. Your like I understand the different personalities and how to like negotiate, negotiate them and stuff yeah. like that. And so that wasn't the big of an issue, but awesome. Yeah, it's all mental. Yeah, it, it, being in a, and you know, that's what competition is all about. You throw yourself in an unfamiliar situation, mm -hmm. but you have to have something very familiar easy to fall back on. Mm -hmm. And that's your routine. Mm -hmm. And that routine is, is really critical. So when you're standing over the ball and you're thinking, don't go here, don't Good. go there, mm -hmm. or you're thinking about a body part, or you're making sure, mm -hmm. well, it, it's going to be a long day. Right. Well, somebody asked me when we went down to the States, how I feel about repeating the same practice routine before mm -hmm. a shot. And for me, and I know for a lot of people, having a practice routine is very important. Yes. But it's also important that all you realize it. that they're not all going to be perfectly identical. There you go. Yeah. Right. So like 
there's gonna be different conditions or whatever. And like for me, I, in my practice routine, I'm looking for a specific feel. So if it takes me three practice swings to feel that specific feel that I'm looking for, then it takes me three. If it takes me one, then it takes me one. But you don't yes. wanna be like, okay, I have to take two practice swings and that's it. And if you don't feel what you wanna feel in those two practice swings, then you're setting yourself up for failure. Exactly. Right? Very good. So, so you have purpose. Yes, you have a practice routine, but it doesn't have to be perfectly identical. Well, that's it. So yeah. it's purposeful. Yeah. And purposeful means you can step up to a shot and go, I got this. I yeah. know exactly what it's going to feel like. The lie looks great. And I'll step into it and execute right from there. Yeah. And then you get in there and you go, mm, that lie looks a little different. Yeah. And let me take a couple of practice swings, get a feel for my surroundings. Yeah. And once I have that feel, now I can predict. Mm -hmm. And it's, that's what you're, you're using that routine to bring yeah. yourself to the point where you can predict what's going to happen. Yeah. Like for an example, in soccer, yeah. if I was getting ready in the change room beforehand, I literally had a, okay, right sock, left sock, right shin pad, left shin pad, uh, right soccer sock, left soccer sock. And then I, I had, that was like precise for me, but yeah. golf isn't like that. Mm. So you can't have an exact routine. Well, you, you can do that when you're getting dressed in the morning if you yeah, want to. Yeah, but like for like ev before every shot kind of thing. Yeah. You're not going to have an exact routine for every shot. Well, no. I mean, the, the, we, it's been said that uh, when you have a routine, try to have exactly the same routine every time. And you're, you're setting yourself up when that happens because every situation is different. Especially for golf. Yes. Because no shot is going to be the same. Exactly. You're, you're hitting a driver, then you're hitting an iron, then you're, hitting, you're putting. And... and if you've been with us, you know, there's, there's super solid scientific research that backs you and says, hey, listen, I could put you here and have your feet in the same chalk line with the same club, mm -hmm. hitting the same ball in the, in the same target mm -hmm. for the next thousand years, and you'll never hit the same shot twice because from here it comes out different. Every shot you hit has a feedback loop that comes into the machine mm -hmm. and the brain goes, oh, and then it uses that information mm -hmm. to, to help you prepare for the next one because mm -hmm. its sole purpose is self-preservation mm -hmm. and making sure you get to live the longest on this planet. Yeah. So uh, you can't repeat. Mm -hmm. And therefore, Kareem, you, you know, all the stuff that you've enjoyed coming to this point, mm -hmm. when you have your practice sessions and you're nutting everything, mm -hmm or you go play a practice round and you've made a bunch of a bushel full of birdies and mm -hmm. you can't wait. Yeah. Well, enjoy that that day. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And you go, all right, that was yeah. a good day. Yeah. And the very next day you play is going to be different. Mm -hmm. Just be ready for it yeah. and attack it the best that you can. Well, even when we we're on our trip in California and we got to finally play. Yes. I had texted Moo, my boyfriend, and I was like, kind of like, oh, I just want to play well. Like we're finally playing outside. And I want to take advantage of like this beautiful golf course and blah, blah, blah. And he's like, Sav, don't put any pressure on yourself. Just go out and like have fun. Yes. Like it's your first time back out in yes. what? Like three, four months. Like yes. just enjoy it. Don't put any pressure on yourself. Like that's not what you're there for. And did you not have fun? Yeah. And that outfit that you had that day was absolutely killer. Yeah, hey, Jay Lindeberg, if you're listening, I'm going to put the video right here of Savannah hitting yeah. that shot. Remember the shot I helped you hit, uh, prepare for? Yeah, that like hook around the chest. Oh my gosh, that was just amazing. <laughs> and, and I'm going, I'm, you're thinking fade right now, right? No, you got to go around the other side of the tree with yeah. a draw, put it at the back of the green, you'll have an easy up and down for par. Yeah. I literally, so it was like, okay, you're the tree. Yep. My ball is here. Yep. The pin is like kind of tucked behind the tree that's right here. Yeah. And I'm in the rough, so I yep. can't really play a fade that easy. Yep. Especially distance wise. So instead there's like bowling alleys of palm trees. Yes. And so I literally just like hooked it back around. It was you, crazy. You, you hooked it into the lane. Yeah. Followed that lane right to the back of the green, right? Mm -hmm. And wasn't that cool though? Mm -hmm. Because so back to what Kareem was saying. I had a hard time hitting my irons. Mm -hmm. And I remember at one point Tiger was struggling that way. Mm -hmm. Um, one of my students had followed him at Firestone. He was playing with Bubba Watson and he loves playing with Bubba because he's, Bubba's so creative. Yeah. And, and so Bubba was just hammering it down the middle of the fairway mm -hmm. and Tiger was right and left in the trees all day. Mm -hmm. And my friend or one of my students was following and he says, off the tee, he was awful. I could beat him off the tee that day. And I'm sure a lot of you could say that too, 
because at one point he just couldn't drive the ball. But he says, I went and stood in his footsteps. Mm -hmm. Where he was, I looked up and I saw nothing. Yeah. And Tiger had gotten out of it, put it in front of the green and got up and down for par. Yeah. And he says, I followed them that day and it was like being in a magic show. Yeah. He had no idea how he could hit that shot. He says, I didn't have that shot. Mm -hmm. and, and he works the ball. He does a lot of working of the ball with me. Mm -hmm. So when you got set up for that shot, yeah. you knew what it was going to feel like. Yeah. You could picture the shot. Yeah. You had the intermediate point. Mm -hmm. And we're going, well, I don't expect much out of this shot. Yeah. Let's just have fun with it. Yeah. And man. I prefer the creative shots. Are you kidding me? Because it actually gives you a specific picture in your head rather yes. than just like a straight shot into the green. Where exactly. you're like, mm. So let that be a reminder. Next time you go to Torrey Pines, you go there to have fun mm -hmm. and stick to that routine. Just keep a good solid routine in your mind. Be very specific of the feel that you're going to use to release and be really diligent about your predictions. If you can't, if you don't know if you're going to hit the ball solid, mm -hmm. well, you can't go to the target. Yeah. Now you're, you're, the ball is begging you it's, for its attention. And now you're delivering at the ball instead of delivering at the target, which is going to be nuts. Mm -hmm. So I hope you enjoyed that. Sav, that was, that was fun. I enjoyed that conversation. A little chip chat. Exactly. <laughs> See you next time.